Okay, here we go. NASA's getting ready to retire the International mm -hmm. Space Station, and they're not just going to leave it up there. They're going to crash it into the Pacific Ocean in a specific area called Point Nemo. In case you've never heard of this, yeah. it's the space graveyard, right? We had never heard about this until no. last week. And you made a suggestion that we talk about it, so let's, let's talk about this. First, if you think about the International Space Station, this was launched back in 1998. Yeah. It has circled the Earth more than 100,000 times, but eventually um, its use sure. is, is done. So they're going to have to find a way to deal with it. So starting in October of 2026, in just four years, they're going to start to maneuver the International Space Station to get in place. This is going to take years. So in 2030, it's going to crash into the Pacific Ocean. But not just anywhere. They don't just say, let's just throw it into an ocean. They specifically send it to this place. It's a place called Point Nemo. It's about 3,000 miles off the coast of New Zealand and 2,000 miles north of Antarctica. Point Wait, say it again, say it again, say it again. 3,000 miles off the coast of New Zealand east, okay. but yet 2,000 miles north of Antarctica. So it's way down there. It's way down there. It is so far from land that the closest humans are the astronauts aboard the ISS when they fly over it. <laughs> are you kidding me? That's, there is absolutely nothing there. Plus, the way the ocean circulates in that point, it's devoid of any significant organic material in life. There may be some sea cucumbers on the bottom, about 13,000 feet down, but it's really biologically and, you know, keeping it away from it, it's the best place for them to put this. The spot was named after Captain Nemo. You remember the book? Yeah. 20,000 20, leagues. leagues Under the Sea. It used to be known as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility. Oh, no, no, no. Bad name. That's why it's Point Nemo. And they have <laughs> since put 253 pieces of space debris in that area since 1971, including, do you remember the Russian space station Mir? Yeah. Do you remember NASA's first little Skylab. space station, Skylab? Skylab. That is also in this spot. So they will direct it to these coordinates as it comes down. Now, the metals that the International Space Station are made of, and we're talking about the aluminum, the titanium, the steel, they're non-toxic. So it'll, it'll crash. It'll probably be in a bazillion pieces and then sink to the bottom at about 13,000 feet below the ocean surface. So no problem for boats or anything like that, nor are there any significant wildlife down there as well. It's just kind of a perfect place. The rocket fuel, which is going to be used, that is toxic, but that will burn off before it hits the water. So environmentally, common sense why this is the best place for them to put this. And once they realize this, anything that's really over, you know, the a size of a car from space mm -hmm. is put into that spot and sunk into the ocean. Now, he, as I was reading this article, I did come across something that I wanted to mention to you. It has nothing to do with this. Did you know there are 26,000 pieces of space junk orbiting the Earth bigger than the size of a softball? Well, yeah, because we, we've talked about this because it's, it's dangerous to that space station. Well, wait, it gets worse. There are 500,000 pieces the size of a marble that could destroy satellites. And then there are 100 million pieces of space debris the size of a grain of salt that could puncture a space suit. Wow. So our problem is a lot larger than what we're going to do with the International Space Station and how do we get rid of all of this space junk in general. Okay. Anyway, I just thought it was kind of cool. It is fascinating. Um, like 3,000 miles east of New Zealand. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah.